Thank you for joining us for another episode of USATF's Journey to Gold Zone podcast. I'm your host, Eric Kennard, joined by the Amy Begley and Fiona O'Keefe is here with us. And Amy is going to uh, dive deep into uh, Fiona's expertise here. Obviously, this is a... Uh, that 10 and 5 is a little deep. That distance stuff gets a little deep waters for me. <laughs> it does, it does. But you are a very special case with the marathon. I mean, your first one. Not many people say, you know what, I'm going to go make the Olympic team on my first marathon. So what made you decide to do that? Well, you know, it kind of just worked out that way with the timing. Um, it, there was potential that I would run one before the trials, but it just ended up being a little bit tight. So we were like, okay, we can just wait until trials to do it. And I did feel very prepared going in, like with the training and everything, but definitely still a lot of unknown on race day. Um, so yeah, glad it worked out. <laughs> so it's a lot less stress being here, watching things, or being at the trials, watching things now that you've made uh, the team and what are you most looking forward to this summer with preparing for Paris? Um, probably just most looking forward to actually getting there um, and having the work be be done. Um, I, I do enjoy the work but um, I'm excited to actually get there and um, put on the US singlet and um, be ready to go line up with the other women on the marathon team. Yeah, that's good. Now, Stanford University, mm -hmm. right? From California originally, yep. right? Yep. Where is home now? Uh, North Carolina. North Carolina. When you were a collegiate at Stanford, did you think that you would be going to the Olympics in the marathon? Or did you think that uh, if it was your Olympic hopes and dreams geared towards such a distance? Or did you have uh -huh. a... Uh, a particular discipline of mine. Maybe eventually, but it definitely, the marathon happened a lot sooner than I thought. Yeah. I thought like, oh yeah, when I'm in my 30s, I'll run the marathon. Yeah, like yeah. that seems like a natural progression, but I was mainly running the 5K in college. Yeah. Um, so I thought like, okay, 5K, 10K is where I'll have my best shot, at least at first. Um, yeah. But yeah, things yeah. progressed. <laughs> now, so with that, how do you, so... I, and, and I don't know this, and excuse my mm -hmm. ignorance in this. Is there moving up and down, or is it once you get to the marathon, you're there? Um, I feel like different people approach it differently. I'll probably go back and forth still yeah. some, um, especially because I feel like I haven't like maxed out what I can do on the track, and the track is fun for me. Um, some marathoners don't like the track at all, um, but I have fun with it, even yeah. though, like, I'm probably not going to, like, win a big kick in a championship okay, race. Okay, um, I still yeah. have fun with it. Because I'm trying to figure out if the consensus. We've had a few other uh, road versus mm -hmm. track athletes. Mm -hmm. so I'm trying to figure out if the, the consensus is the roads are just that much better or is it that, you know, there's still love for the oval. Yeah, yeah, definitely still love for the track, okay. too. <laughs> so what do you think about going between spikes and the marathon shoes? Like, how do you... How do your feet take that? Yeah, that can be a little bit tough. Um, I did run one track 10,000 earlier this spring um, over in the UK. And I feel like it wasn't too bad going back, like between the spikes and the marathon flats. But that is part of why I'm not racing here at the trials, because we're like getting closer um, to that marathon. And, um, you know, it's only my second marathon, so I want to be careful. <laughs> save yeah. the feet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, definitely. We've had some marathoners tell us about the feet. How were your feet after the marathon trials? Um, they definitely could have been worse. Like, um, they weren't super cute, <laughs> but uh, yeah, definitely some blisters. Um, but yeah, it could have been worse. What is the recovery process for running the soles off your actual feet? Like, uh, that's what I was there at the trials and I saw, you know, it was rough for a lot of the runners like so what does that look like like how how long do you get off to recover and then what is it, do you, is it just band-aids second skin sort of thing I mean. <laughs> yeah yeah I mean I definitely feel like you just can't force the whole recovery process like I know that some people especially like some of the older women who are really experienced like bounce back super fast yeah. but I needed a little bit more time just to chill um like walking was very difficult the day right, after right, and sure. um, yeah I anticipate that will be the case in Paris as well. Okay, okay. Good excuse to get that airport uh, wheelchair and <laughs> shuttle yeah, around. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh man, that would be that would be rough. 
Yeah. So what is the plan for you then? What what is your build up look like from before Paris? Yeah, so straight from here, I'm headed to Mammoth Lakes um, with a few people on my team. Um, so we'll be getting ready there. Um, I feel like that'll be a really good place to just like run really hard (laughs) Um, mammoth makes it tough pretty easily with the altitude there and everything Um, and then we'll go straight from there over to France um, like end of July beginning of August Mm -hmm. and have were you one of the ones that went over early to see the course yeah um, so Puma hosted an event out there in the beginning of April and Dakota and I were both out there at the same time and able to like run on that on that middle section of the course that has all the hills in it (laughs) what'd you think Um, it's definitely tough but I think it it does create more opportunities for us um, like as a team too Um, I think it prevents anyone from running a 214 on that course yeah, hopefully yeah, yeah. um so i do think like people who are tough and play it smart um things will really pay off okay i like it smart yeah, racing yeah. is gonna be good that's a pretty good competitive advantage to go and pre-visit and get to mm-hmm. kind of yeah you know, that's sure. big time pretty early i mean on the track you obviously get the walkthroughs and you know you get to warm up and stuff, but to get there and run and having a, a team approach, that's good. So do you think, I know Connor was here and he talked a little bit about the team aspect and running a marathon and how, you know, groups get together out there on the course. It, do you think there'll be a lot of that going on on the course in Paris as it relates to inner squad? And are you going to approach it from a teammate perspective with a team mindset or will it, the focus be you know what, Fiona's trying to get out here and, and get what's going for her. And, and that would be the case. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, we've definitely talked a little bit about, like, at least wanting to know, like, some about what each other's race plans are so we can help each other and kind of be aware of um, what each person is thinking. Um, I do think that, like, it's going to be us against this course yeah. in a way. Um, so I think that if we can kind of team up together and you know at least kind of have each other's backs out there even if we're not like executing the same exact race plan I think that can go a long way and you know talk about team aspect so a lot of people don't know that um, you will have a United States table for your fluid stops there'll be eight fluid stops and you know you get to decide what you want at each of them so you know what is your fluid setup in there and you know for the for the marathon yeah, I mean, I'll definitely just have, like, the, the standard bottles, I guess. Probably a few of them I'll have, like, a gel tape to it. Um, but I think they're doing ice hats as well. Um, so I'll I'll try those out depending on how hot it is. Um, I'm not sure how often I'm going to be wanting to, like, swap out my hat with the ponytail, too. I need to figure that situation out. Um, so, yeah, that's definitely actually something I need to practice on some of these long runs coming up. Are you a just a ponytail? Are you braid it to you know keep the knots out? What do you do? Um, I typically braid it if it's humid at all, um, because yeah, otherwise it like soaks up all the moisture and gets like super puffy and impossible to detangle in the shower. It's like an entire bottle of conditioner. Yeah, oh, yeah, it's know. rough. It is is rough. I mean, it yeah. just looks like a a, a nest that yeah. is just full. I'm, I'm easy going up here. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it must be nice. <laughs> You know, just the things you got to think about. We were talking about, you know, have to wear the, the band-aids or the glide or it's it's a whole it's a whole TMI thing for marathoners. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's not pretty. So the DMR fantasy, mm-hmm. uh, we, we, uh, we kind of gave you a little preface there. Right. So hopefully you, you're ready for this. Okay. And hopefully you know what you want to run. So let us know what you'll run first. Okay, well... I guess I should probably run the mile because it is the longest. Um, so best chance of not screwing it up. Um, I would, I'm going to go with some of my former Stanford teammates probably for this DMR. Um, so let's see. I'll put Olivia Baker on the 800. Nice. Um, I'll do Elise Cranny on the 12. Um, let's see, for the four 
Ooh, this is tough. Um, I'll bring Allison Felix out for uh, well, okay. No, okay. no, 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 wait, wait, wait. <laughs> you, you got uh, Corey Carter with Stanford. For true, her, true. So if you wanted to keep yeah, it Stanford, okay, you could okay. keep it Stanford. That, that might yeah. be better. That yeah, might she be better. was she was before my time, well, before so she didn't Well, she Allison didn't was a lot before your <laughs> yeah, time. Yeah, that's too, true, so that's so true. But yeah, everyone knows <laughs> who she Yeah, yeah. Okay, we'll go with Corey Carter. Keep it cohesive. Keep yeah, yeah. I like that. Yeah. Either works. I, yeah. I, I didn't know if you wanted yeah. to keep the stamp. No, thing no, or. it's probably good. Yeah, 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 I like that. Yeah, I think that'll yeah. be a pretty good team. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think we do all right. So, is there anything you want to shout out today while while you have the mic? Sponsors, people, things. Um, my teammates who are racing later this week, um, Danny Aragon and Angel Picarillo will be in the fifteen hundred, um, and then Natasha Rogers is coming back for the ten k. Nice. Okay. Um, yeah. So excited to watch all of them. All right. All right. Well, good luck to the team out there mm-hmm. and continued success. Good luck to you and Paris. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, we're looking forward to. Uh, getting over there and i'm looking forward to seeing what these heels are about I, i've been known to be a novelty <laughs> runner in my day okay. I'm, I'm into recreational running right now my favorite part is that you can stop whenever you want to <laughs> so maybe you and i'll go try the hills out there when we're there yeah uh, yeah, we yeah. Can go try yeah you there. guys could go do the um marathon that's like mass participation it's the night after 9 really? p.m yeah mm-hmm. nah nah you have to send the french <laughs> ambulance out there for me or something like that <laughs> I don't know what the, the, the helicopter ride is like to the hospital, <laughs> but I don't want to. Uh, no, I'm good. I'm good on that. At 9 o'clock, 9 p.m. That's what time? I was told. I was told it's I 9 p.m. So, yeah. Whose idea is this? I don't know. 20,000 people. The streets the are going to be full of Parisian marathoners at 9 p.m.? Mm-hmm. Oh, well, I won't be there. You <laughs> won't. Be. Hopefully, you'll be. This is post, right? Mm-hmm. So hopefully we'll yeah, be celebrating after. something. Yeah, 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 there, yeah we go. there we go. <laughs> well, thank you for joining us, Fiona. Mm-hmm. We appreciate your time, and thank you all for joining us for another episode of USATF's Journey to Gold Zone podcast.